Comrade Chairman of the meeting, Comrade Jackson, all of the distinguished comrades, officers, at the head table, all of the councillors, MP candidates, all of the great comrades up on the platform, Eastern West Madan comrades, workers and warriors, visiting comrades from other parts of Jamaica, I greet you well. It is indeed a pleasure to be here once again in the bastard of the People's National Party, Eastern West Valley. A constituency which has given us the most successful political Prime Minister in the history of Jamaica. Personal James Patterson, who no other Prime Minister has served as long as he has and as well as many elections as he has in independent Jamaica. Comrades, I want to start by congratulating you as the workers of the party in this constituency and the people of the divisions, the four divisions of East and West Milan for delivering the victory in February this year in the local government election. What a time. I want to congratulate your four councillors for their success in that election and for stepping forward to serve the people of their divisions in this great constituency. And I want to pick up his worship, the mayor of South Lamar, responsible for the parish of Westmoreland, Governor Delancey. He went through a lot in the past year or so. He and I were in regular communication and the little fun and games that they were trying with him in the council, in the council. But the people spoke when the time came and sent him forward to be the mayor. And we had a famous victory in this parish and won the vast majority of divisions and are once again in control of the municipal corporation. Comrades and friends, I also want to say to you, thank you for accepting the comrade who I asked to come here to serve you. The man who has been my right hand since I became president of the People's National Party as my general secretary. The man who I have entrusted with a critical portfolio of agriculture, fisheries and rural development. I do not regard agriculture as a minor ministry. No. Agriculture is a central ministry in the economic policy of the People's National Party. Because we recognize that we have an economy here today which is not well balanced. It is like a stool which is missing a leg or two. And it's wobbling. Because we are too dependent on Remittances, for example, over which we have no control. We give thanks to the diaspora every time. And we love them and we respect them and we want to bring them in as part of national development. But at the end of the day, no country can develop and rely for its economy and its foreign exchange and people deciding to send money home. That can be a strategy. Agriculture has never got, been given the attention and prominence that is required to take it to the level that it should be at. We are blessed in this country with some of the finest produce that is in demand all over the world because of the quality of the produce. This that has created our sprinters and made this is the island the spring capital of the world because our sprinters grow and good food, yes. good Jamaican food. Yes. So I don't want anybody to feel sad. Agriculture is 
something that doesn't really matter. Agriculture is central, agriculture is critical. And I put Comrade Dr. Ian Campbell there because I want somebody with energy, the capacity for hard work, the vision, the commitment, and the brilliance who can deliver a transformational work for the people of Jamaica in this portfolio. So comrades, I thank you again for accepting this man as your representative in the next election. I believe he will serve you well. He is committed to you. He is a man from the people and for the people. And I know that he will make you proud in garden house and in government while ensuring that he works with your four excellent councillors to deliver for the people of East and West Canal and so that the People's National Party can feel confident that we will have this constituency as it should be in the right good column, not just next time, but in times to come. Comrades, I talk to you at a time when we have a government that is on the ropes. A government that is nearing the end of its life. When the Minister of Finance of a country and one who has played such a central role in a government as Dr. Nigel Clark can decide to cut and move to a foreign country to take up our work in the run up to an election which is due within a year. Suffer up. is somebody who I have a good personal relationship with. And I congratulate him on a personal level for his appointment. And it's a good thing to have a Jamaican serving as one of the four deputy managing directors at the IMF. Because it shows, again, what a powerhouse of a country we are. But why would he be leaving his critical post and the duties of service to the people of Jamaica? at this time. Is it because he knows that there are eight MPs in the house who are under investigation for illicit enrichment and corruption offense? And he doesn't want that to be had any association with that when that finally comes to Parliament as a report? Is it because his boss can't have his integrity commission Declaration certified for year after year, and it's that is good standing with the integrity commission of the country, and he does not want that to in any way taint him by association, and he can see the last that is coming in the next general election for the yes, government of the people So that means remains intact. Comrades, we don't like our flat there. They are really not in a position to govern the country. And they took them by surprise. No doubt. Not feel what they want to say. And they are reeling from the impact because a week has passed and I know they can name a successor to Nigel Clark in that critical portfolio. And we are in a time when there are a lot of matters arising in that ministry. We have a budget where there's a hole. For this fiscal year, and this is before Barry, because there was a 25 billion dollars of tax giveaways that were supposed to be financed by a single transaction which he never described in his presentation in the budget debate. A securitization of receivables in college, a big, big word. You know, so he is Mr. Algernon still. <laughs> but essentially, what that is is a sale of future flows that you're gonna, the government is entitled to. We don't know where, we don't know what source. And I asked him, and Julia Robinson, Shadow Finance Post, has asked him many times, and he's refused that this shows what it is, and now he's on his way out. So where, where is the money going to come from to finance that package of measures that he announced? Plus, 
He said the securitization of receivables is more than the 25 million, and the rest of it was cut. Contemplated within the positive numbers, so it's like 40 million missing. Then you have the burial losses and damage, which he says only $5 million. $5 million is going to be made available from the various disaster mitigation measures that have been put in place. Four billion of it, of the five, coming from the CRIP, which is an insurance arrangement really pioneered by the effort of Dr. Omar Davis when he was finance minister. He was the one who went international with the need for small, vulnerable islands like ours to be able to finance the recovery from disasters, from natural disasters, without having to go further into debt. And his idea was developed further and became CRIF. But it's four billion we get from CRIF. And the other billion was some reserves which have been put aside out of the budget over years to make it five. But the losses and damage from burial is billions and billions beyond that. Let's say between 30, 40 billion, we don't know the full, full yet. But between the damage to the farmers, the damage to the schools, the damage to the roads, and the damage to housing, not to mention anything else, it's a huge figure. So then we have to recast the budget to do something for the people and because the people that need help. Imagine you have back to school at a time when Barry Lick on the 3rd of July. People in all over Jamaica, here in Westmoreland, St. Elizabeth, Manchester, Clarendon, and other parishes too, are feeling extraordinary expenses because the price of food gone to some crazy places, crazy heights, and the government don't do anything extra for back to school. Just to see the allocation that was originally and has always been there. People are not getting the help with back to school that they need. Comrades, we must ready ourselves because we are going to be in government soon. The polls have shown that the people of Jamaica are tired of this labor and government. They can't trust them. They can't have confidence in them. Too many things have gone around, too many scandals at the highest level right through the government. We must be ready. That's why I'm happy to hear the zeal, the energy, the enthusiasm that your future MP has spoken about and in relation to his portfolio. He understands why I asked him to play that role. And he's giving it serious thought and he's ready to and he will have my full support as Prime Minister because I see this is a key strategy for making Jamaica have a more resilient economy. Food security is critical to the future and we must have our best in the right spots so we can deliver for Jamaica. Carmen Ian Hills, I have given in water. Water is life. Water is critical to agriculture. Water is critical to many, many communities across Jamaica, including here in East West Milan. We must focus on capital expenditure to improve water. You know, we have had decades of major road expansion in the country. And it has been a good thing. And it has increased the speed with which people can traverse the island, move around, and that infrastructure is important. The people need water. And a PNP government is going to prioritize the delivery of water when we next come in to office. The school system, early childhood from birth through primary, is another priority for us. The school system is not delivering for the Jamaican children. We have terrible metrics, terrible statistics that we are hearing as the very low levels of performance in our school system. The country cannot develop when our human resources, and we are brilliant people, but our human resources are not getting the necessary input and support so that they can achieve their full potential. And it starts with early childhood and it goes through to primary. If you get the youth them ready, properly, prepared for secondary so they can read and write, they can do the basic arithmetic, and they can think through problems. 
secondary school will take care of itself. What is happening now is we have such poor results in CSEC because the people that enter in secondary school and many, many, many of them can't read the right. And can't the base, they're not ready for it. We have to fix that. We understand that issue because that issue feeds its way into all the social problems in the country. Because when you have youth leaving secondary school and they don't have none to show for it, they put in years of their life at school and don't have one certificate to show for it, so they get C-sex subjects and so on. What happens to them? The job market is not friendly for them. Other things friendly for them. They get mixed up in other things we don't want our young people to get mixed up into. The mayhem why Jamaica has one of the highest murder rates in the world. Because it's the source of it. Is these issues I'm talking about. The next PNP government understands we need a balanced policy to sort out the social conditions of the country so that the economy of the country can thrive and grow and deliver wealth to our people. So our people don't have to fly to our foreign to try and make it in life. They can make it in life right here and build our country to be the top country that it should be. So we are brilliant people. So comrades, I say that to say this. All walk one. A lot depends on you. You are the workers. You are our voices on the ground. You are the ones who must carry the message. We know that in the last election, many, many PNP never come out at all. It actually happened in 2016 as well. But it happened even worse, much worse around. In 2020. Watch what's up. In 2020. In that way, I'm this time. In that way, I'm this time. Why not way I'm this time? First of all, we are a united leadership in the PNP. A united team. We are all working on a common cause to deliver the government that the people need, that Jamaica needs to take us to the next level. To take us out of this mire of hopelessness and despair, this disgust with leadership that exists now, and to build a new Jamaica and a new day for our people. It's not going to happen again because you, our workers, understand the role that you need to play and that you must deliver the victory. And you are committed and you are ready and you can deliver the victory that is required so that we're all in a better place. Are you ready, comrades and Mr. So comrades, I want you to leave this meeting feeling energized, understanding the mission that we are on, the mission to take our country to a better place, the mission to take the parish of West Ballon, which has been so good to the PMP over the years, and that we owe so much to, to take the parish of West Ballon to a better place, to take this great constituency of Eastern West Ballon, to a better place as well. And to take you, your community, your family, to a better place. Comrades, we are confident, we are not complacent. It is work and organization and a seriousness of intent and commitment that is going to deliver the victory. Nothing else can do it. They are going to come with all manner of things to try and divert you, to weaken our resolve, to make us lose our focus. We're not going to bow. We can run the money. We're not going to bow. They can tell like that we're not going to bow. We are the party of Norman Washington, man in the right, excellent. National hero who was a man who was an architect of Jamaica's independence and nationhood. Michael Joshua Manley. The man, the transformational leader who made everybody somebody in this country and uplifting black people from being second class citizens to being in their rightful place. We are the part of PJ Patterson, your former MP, the political strategist and genius, and the man who delivered 18 years of progress, don't make them turn the life on the man. If you were to go through that, time to go through tonight. But if I was to go through the achievements of that era under the PNP, you would see that we have every reason to be proud of that era.
We're in the party of Porsche Sims Sevilla. Probably the most popular of them all in our moment. The first female Prime Minister of this country. The first female leader of our party. Sister P, Mama P, my political mentor. As she bring me into Senate, as she bring me into Cabinet. And I love her. I'm bigger up every time. The party of Peter and David Phillips. The man who delivered. Oh, I'm going to talk about my Nigerian class and the IMF and the net reduction. It's, it's Dr. Peter David Phillips as finance minister supported by his leader at the time. And I am as the man ensuring the legislation will be delivered on time for the IMF agreement. He was the man who was the architect of the debt reduction, which has put us in a much better place on a macro level. But the micro has sought out, yes. And that has to be what we do next. And it is Iman. It's my time now. Yeah.